Hi, my name is Warner, and I'll be your chemistry tutor for this problem. Let's start off by reading the problem first. So the above mass spectrum, which is given, is for the hypochlorite ion, ClO minus. Oxygen has only one isotope, which has a mass of 16 atomic mass units. So before we go any, any further, we're, we're going to understand the constant behind the mass spectrum, what it is. So a mass spectrometer is basically a machine that shoots an electron to a particular molecular species that we're trying to analyze. And it can result in two scenarios. It can result in the formation of a cation or the formation of an anion. And from the cation and the molecular ions, it can divide into two particular regions that make up the molecular ion. And basically, the machine itself analyzes the certain abundance that each region holds in the molecular ion. So in either scenario, we see that the charge is going to be 1. And this is going to come in handy when determining like how we can rewrite this mass to charge ratio. So since the charge is 1, we can just simply say that the, that the x-axis simply represents molecular weight. So as you go along the x-axis, molecular weight increases. And the percent abundance is simply the, the percentage of how much each region is present in the molecular ion. So both of these regions add up to 100. So this lays down the foundation of um, this FRQ. So we were given a certain graph, a mass spectrograph. Um, one region has 41 AMU, and another region has 53 AMU. And, 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 and these regions represent the, the, the elements that make up the hypochlorite ion, which is going to be Cl and O, oxygen. So we, if, when we're looking at oxygen, there's going to be one isotope, which is going to be 16 AMU, while chlor, chloride has two isotopes. So the first part of the question asks us to find the amount of neutrons of the most common isotope. So we're already focusing on this region which has a higher abundance compared to this other region. So since we already know that one neutron is roughly amount to one AMU, we could just simply subtract 16 to each AMU in order to find the amount of, um, the amount of mass that Cl is composing in each isotope. So we subtract 16, it's going to lead to 25. And we subtract 16 from 53, it's going to be to 37. So since we already know that one neutron is around, was roughly around 1 AMU, we could just say that 25 AMU of um, Cl is just going to be 25 neutrons. And the, re and the neutrons that are proposing um, region 2 are going to be 37 neutrons. So since the region 1 has the highest amount of um, abundance, um, we're, we're going to say that that the amount of neutrons present in the most common isotope is going to be 25. So we're trying to find the average mass of ClO. So there is this, ne this needy formula where we're multiplying the mass of each isotope times the abundance. So we're, we already know that the abundance adds up to 100. So we can roughly estimate that this is going to be around one-fourth, and this is going to be three-fourths. So even though the, the graph I made here, it's not up to scale to the original one, we're, it's, gonna, it's, 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 it's allowing us to find a certain um, average atomic mass. So we're going to put in 75 times the atomic mass units, um, and 25 times 53, all divided by 100. And you should be able to get 44. Forty four AMU. So that we're halfway there. Let's focus on the third part of the problem. Will the negative charge of the ion um, affect the, the spectra? So negative charge, in other words, it's basically an electron. How much does an electron weigh? It's close to zero, actually. If you want to know the exact number, 
roughly this small number. So we already can tell that the the addition of a electron, either would you would add one or two or as many as you like, it's not going to change the spectra because it's focusing on the mass. So since this is a quite a minuscule amount, we'll say no. Sorry, messed up there. So speculate why the negative charge is distributed on the oxygen ion. So what we have on the right here is a, a molecular orbital theory of um, hypochlorite. So we see that all the anti-orbitals are occupied, while the Cl over here, the octet is already achieved. And for oxygen, there's still one there's still one electron that can be added here. So if if, if a negative charge was um, distributed on the on the on the chloride, there would be a certain excited state that it would it would achieve. So it would mean that it would have an additional orbital where it would donate an electron. And it would be in the d orbital. And and it really it really happens. And we begin to realize, because of this, halogens don't double bond. And chlorides can't use d orbitals to expand to a certain octet. So since the antibondings are orbitals are completely filled on the Cl, right? We realize that, it, that the orbitals on oxygen is not filled. So it could, so a negative charge can be easily distributed on the oxygen because of that. So in summary, a mass spectra graph is, mass spectra is a graph of abundance versus molecular weight. Neutrons are around one AMU, so molecular weight can allow us to, can allow us um, to determine number of neutrons. We can use this equation to determine average mass, and we found out that mass electrons are negligible, so it wouldn't affect the spectra as much. Halogens don't reach excited states because they don't use zero orbitals. So they can expand expand to an octet with a negative charge. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, see you later.